আমাদের বিশ্ব ভারতী রাঙা মাটি শান্তি নিকিত শান্তি নিকিত তোমার বুকে বিরাজ করে নন্দনার কলা ভব বিশ্বভারতী রাগা মাটি শান্তি নিকিত শান্তি নিকিত তোমার মাটির ফুলে এত যে সুগন্ধ রবীন্দ্রনাথ ঠাকুর তাতে পেলেন কত আনন্দ তোমার মাটির ফুলে এত যে সুগন্ধ রবীন্দ্রনাথ ঠাকুর তাতে পেলেন কত আনন্দ তোমার আনন্দ ছড়িয়ে গেল ত্রিভব বিশ্বভারতী রাঙা মাটি শান্তি নিকিত শান্তি নিকিত তাই দেশ বিদেশের মানুষ তারা খবর পেল দল বেঁধে সব ছেলে মেয়ে দেখতে এল তাই দেশ বিদেশের মানুষ তারা খবর পেল দল বেঁধে সব তারা দেখতে এল দেখে তাদের প্রাণজুর আলো দেখে তাদের হৃদয় জুড়ালো ফুটে গেল মশ্বভারতী রাগা মাটি শান্তি নিকিত শান্তি নিকিত এই আমাদের বিশ্ব ভারতী শান্তি নিকিত তাই সে কে রাম ফকির ভেবে বলে রবীন্দ্রনাথ ঠাকুরের আশীর্বাদে আল্লাহ রাসু রাম ফকির ভেবে বলে রবীন্দ্রনাথ ঠাকুরের আশীর্বাদে আল্লাহ রসুল ভগবান ভরে দিল ম রাঙা মাটি শান্তি নিকিত শান্তি নিকিত এই আমাদের বিশ্বভারতী রাঙা মাটি শান্তি নিকিত শান্তি নিকিত তোমার বুকে বিরাজ করে নন্দনার কলা ভব বিশ্ব ভারতী রাঙা মাটি শান্তি নিকিত শান্তি নিকিত শান্তি নিকিত Well, uh, in our student days, there were a few interesting teachers and 
um, quite a few interesting students. Um, we really, I mean, it was quite a formative period. Learned some bit, you can say, not a lot. Uh, most of us came here to become artists, uh, working artists, not really kind of. Um, not really kind of uh, art historian as we turned out to be so but then that that option was open here uh, those options were open laid open because you had two years preparatory that was the structure it was a five years bachelor's course with two years preparatory period and then three years uh, followed up by three years of uh, specialization uh, first two years we had to do everything so we learned almost painting, sculpture, painting we did before, like every other young boy who came to join here, did paintings before largely, I dabbled a little bit in clay uh, before, so that was sculpture, if you call it sculpture, um, but then um, had interest in, interest in, in um, image making practices. I read up a, some bit of literature basically before coming here. Okay. So I was familiar with literature quite a bit, of European literature, um, but can't say. Now, um, yeah, so we read that up, I uh, was familiar with Bengali literature as well, and some of the Indian writers, apart from Bengali literature, I was familiar with some of them, not all. Sujata is one of those signature sculptures by Ramkinkar Bej, a wonderful sculpture. But unfortunately, the way we see it today is not the way it was meant to be seen. Today we see Sujata sculpture as well as the other very famous sculptures by Ramkinkar, like Santal family and the meal call, completely barricaded with railings around and also with a shade above. These precisely are the things which conceptually the sculpture wanted to deny. But unfortunately, these are the elements, like the railings around the sculpture and the shade above the sculpture, are uh, with what uh, the entire sculptures are being surrounded. And I also feel constricted. Now, why is this constriction? Answer to this question will definitely lead us to a certain understanding of a sculpture like this. Constriction is there or we feel constriction precisely because this kind of sculptures like Sujata is meant to become a part of the environment surrounded by these huge long tall eucalyptus trees and shawl trees. Sujata as a sculpture, as a sculptural form was supposed to get merged with this environment. So, on the one hand, we have these natural entities like these tall eucalyptus trees. On the other hand, we have this very elongated version of this uh, female uh, figure known as Sujata, who almost looks like one of those eucalyptus trees she is surrounded by, to the extent that there were moments in our student days when it was yet to have a shade and the railing. Sometimes we mistook an eucalyptus tree as Sujata. So it is such a wonderful sculpture which could exchange its identity time and again with its surrounding trees. Probably it doesn't really happen so physically these days because of the shade 
because the way Sujata sculpture has been barricaded in the name of protection from its environment. But this was definitely one of those wonderful environmental sculptures, not only because it was located outside the studio or in the midst of um, uh, an open area and the trees and under an open sky, but also because in terms of its form, in terms of its texture, look at the texture of the Sujata sculpture. It was supposed to become organically a part of the nature. So I think that is the major, very, very important feature of a sculpture like that, including certain features like, as I already mentioned, its elongation, its very, very rough, uneven surface, its uh, very existence, which like many of those Giacomito sculptures almost tend to melt with the environment. So it is uh, advisable that you come and look at Sujata at different times of the day in different lights, in moonlit night, in the harsh sunlight, during the monsoon, in the evening, in the very early morning, you will find that the sculpture is assuming and re-assuming its existence in different ways. Now this also suggests that this kind of sculptures including the Chantal family and Milkol have this wonderful ability to respond to the changing phenomenon of nature, respond to the changing situation of nature. It is not something permanently fixed as an aesthetic entity. Is its aesthetics is subject to certain changes as and when it keeps responding, reacting to the changing nature around. They are very important sculptures, the Nilkong and the Sandal family. I mean, one important thing is the shift it brings in Indian art. Uh, they are the first truly monumental modern sculptures in India. Uh, everything that can be compared with it was done many years after that. Those two sculptures, especially the Sandal family. And um, the, the main shift that you see in them is what do they represent? Before this, we had either religious art, which revolved around, I mean, broad religious values, but maybe human life look through the philosophical conceptual frameworks that these religions provided okay. there was a lot of i mean everyday life in it but through that perspective okay. now after that you had a great medieval period in which a lot of art was produced and patronized by kings, produced in the sense produced in the court. So it was largely court art and so on. So that gave prominence to, I mean, rulers, their activities, and history viewed through their lenses a great deal. Other things were subsumed within that kind of a vision. Then came the colonial thing, where again 
it was the rulers, the king, the king, the viceroys, and these people who gathered prominence. So if you look at a lot of sculpture in the 19th century, India was revolving around these kind of things. But Ram Kingdom makes a big difference. He has the tribal peasant coming to the center of art practice. You valorize them, you make them larger than life size, and you make the viewer look at these people not as peripheral characters but as highly dignified people. And so you can see a shift in perspective regarding the people around us. The shift from the top of the pyramid to the bottom of the pyramid. So that making that shift was the most important thing yeah, that Ram did. Also in a sense how do you bring these two experiences of uh, our traditional arts, traditional sculpture of India and your growing familiarity with the sculpture of modern Europe, bringing these two things together into a more hybrid new language. This is also done in the Sandal family. Now, Ramchandra's own practices move in certain directions based on his uh, experiences of the social and the political over the next 20 years. And that is reflected in the milk cow. So it goes. So there are some gains, there are some losses as this happens. So the milk cow is done against a different mental set than the first one, where there is the world wars, where there is a unionization of the peasantry, or where the famine and the war that preceded, I mean, the sculpture in the 40s, how they transformed the peasant tribal society into a more, I mean, labor force in the, I mean, the peasant into a laborer in the construction industry and so on. So those things are reflected. So he's still looking at that bottom of the pyramid, but socially that bottom or the nature of the bottom of the pyramid has changed. So that is reflected again there. So these are important things, I mean, in a sense. Like it worked like joint family, and if you go 
go from joint family, you can see this, uh, the old houses of joint family. There is a concept of chahal, there is a concept of the mm -hmm. court here. And court here plays a major role in bondage, in exchanging uh, everything, yeah. sharing. Mm -hmm. So that's the space, so that's the physical space which, which works, uh, uh, which plays a major role of sharing thoughts, sharing ideas, sharing, sharing everything. Uh, and I haven't seen any colleges in this particular format. Uh, probably there are, but I haven't seen it. So eventually what happens, like, there is a kind of a connection. So once I go from here for a cup of tea to Chinabar, mm. I can see somebody is coming from textile department, I can see somebody is coming from painting department, somebody can see us uh, talking over there from sculpture department, and he also comes and joins. So this is how it mingles. And that's the typical character of Kalamukun. That though there are differences, there are divisions in terms of disciplines, but which doesn't exist at all. So that's the kind of, an, uh, that was also a kind of an idea of uh, the earlier masters, earlier teachers. That it, it works jointly. So I was talking about community-based projects, I was talking about community-based uh, uh, education system. So probably this is a kind of an uh, example of it, where it works. So it, it, it cannot be only uh, obtained through a um, few people, but it needs a planning, it needs an architectural uh, divisions, it needs a kind of an space to do that, space to happen that. So yeah, and, and the architectural plan uh, works in that way. kind of an open environment, most importantly the presence of nature and uh, an informal relationship between teachers and students and uh, in the process you are learning was quite unique. Though I heard the story but uh, practically when I started experiencing that, I said wow, this is, this is, this is studies. I was just, it was like fun to me. The feeling was, you know, it's like uh, you, and that is what I tell even the other students also, how to choose your stream, where you should feel natural. So it was natural to me, it was not studied, I was enjoying it. I would have done it by paying something and do something. And you, if you make that kind of thing your profession, then it's, it's, you know, your, whatever you are doing later, rest of your life, it doesn't feel like that I'm doing a job or I'm doing something else. I'm all the time doing my passion. So I felt almost like when you put a duckling in the water, so you naturally start floating. So I, I was water. I, I was so glad. Karavon, that time I was lucky that Karavon had such a wonderful teachers that time. And uh, one of the most important and uh, lucky I was that when I was leaving to Shantaniketan, my father told me that there is a one very special person. Try to learn as much as possible. That was Professor K. G. Subramanian. He used to call money. So 
so that was a huge learning uh, he is i think i think i think he is one man institution and uh, though i was in sculpture department but i always kalavan was like that you can go to any department teachers we had such a wonderful teacher in our sculpture department as well like sharbori da ajit da shushen da vikas da they were all very good artists based on early pre classical indian art there are things based on the kerala murals there are things based on popular things like the local chariots of bengal drawings from there there are things based on i mean uh, post classical sculptures and themes based on everyday life all coming together 
Now, if you look at the spectrum, it shows a wide spectrum of interest and what you might think that the panorama of thoughts to which the students and teachers are probably referring at that point of time. Now, it was a way of maybe spreading out this panorama of arts in and around you that such murals or such relief sculptures like the Black House did. But it is not an isolated thing. It has to be seen along with the rest of the things that you see. So, in an art school, it was like putting up all your books around you. If, I mean, if you say that in, uh, books are museums without walls, you might say the murals and all of this is the, I mean, museums brought into real living spaces. Art is something that you have to explore and learn as you work together. Together here means not just working in collective only, but also working with the memory of collective methods of work. So you are constantly engaging with different traditions, different methods, different things. And as a uh, artist practicing pedagogy also as a practice, I personally believe that it's more a collective process of exploration. So for me, uh, coming to the institute is part of my art practice. So I share my methodology of working together and uh, also look into the how students respond to it and we try to develop a uh, process by sharing different tools and different ideas. And in that context, I think uh, I believe in that idea of workshop. Because workshop is a process which uh, goes beyond this position of observer and maker binary. Because in a workshop situation, everybody is a participant. And this I sort of uh, experienced in the workshops of other Sarkar also, where he is uh, looking at workshop as something without a viewer. So that means everybody is a participant and working together to learn and also make mistakes and learn from the other person what he is doing or she is doing and incorporate those memories, those methods of working as part of your own learning process.
Taiwan do not have any different festival. It's a university festival. It's a part of that. Only our this Nandan Mela is for uh, this uh, Nandalal boast, but but uh, uh, centenary or anniversary like that. But uh, like if you talk about Vikshrapan, Vikshrapan, that is a ceremony which was started by Rubina Tagore quite long long ago, and. You know, it is a very simple thing. Uh, we can take a plant and we can plant it somewhere. It is a different. But when we go through this in a with a festival, that makes it very important because tree plantation is a very big thing. It is not a simple thing. One day this tree will give so much thing to us. So the whole festival is created in that day, that way. It's not a small festival, it's a big festival. The tree that is taken in Palki, that means its position is that we are taking so care of this small, tiny, this plant and taking uh, the plant with a, with a procession, with uh, decoration. De what decoration? Decoration with the leaves, natural things, everything. Because Shantanik is in the place, the natural resources of this is very big thing here. So nothing different, only the plants and trees and flowers with that we decoration has been done. And the small thing, uh, the festival has made a uh, entertaining and a awareness uh, to the people about that how much we should take care of a plant and how we should plant it. That is a symbolic, that we are taking Vikrapan as a symbolic, then after that so many trees are planted. That is the beginning. Right. Same the big, uh, halakarshan. Halakarshan means the first um, uh, that uh, cultivation started by this making the land for for cultivation. So the first that the simple festival, the farmer they easily you can go with the bull and they can start. But that start with the festival. So the whole community is aware that now it has been started. <laughs> Ravidnath, it was important. The rural section was an important thing for Ravidnath. He also took care uh, of the development of the rural. So, Sinikitan was made. So, all the festivals are related with this, our socio uh, things. <laughs> Nandan Museum, Kalabhavan Museum, Kalabhavan Museum, Kinti Amadiri Khani, Rovindavan Museum, Chiyo Ani Puro, Nakal Rovindana, Niji Ita, Tuli Kore Chiyo. In fact, Rovindana, Pedishti Ka Anik Chubi Anik Taj Ene Chiren, Kalabhavan Ek Chari. Ekhani, Abunendana Thir Namdala Vinat Bhairi Ramki Ka Rovindana Ta Aachin, Echarao Prochu Utkat Prints Aachin, Upiyohi Prints. जेकुलो भारत वर्षे आर कोनो म्यूजियम में नहीं, इन्फ्रेट आमदरीखने फॉरेस्टन आर्टिस्ट बोरो कलेक्शन भारत वर्षे को था में, आमदर भारत वर्षे प्रथम बाउबाउ से एक्सिबिशन एशिस चिल्ड्रन कोलकाता है 1922 डिसेंबर लोगों ने रात दिल मधुस्तु था बाबू ने रात तो हम और ये टेल आर्टिस्ट प्रिंसिपल चिल्ड्रन प्रोजेक्ट पाल के लिए तो किसी को ले अनेक शिक्षित बेड़े चिलें, शेही काज, शेही काज, शेही कंधे की को आस्तुचुजो डॉन पाल, 
German expressionist artist Sufi Kornare wrote a painting of Abhinandana. He 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 wrote a painting of Sufi Kornare wrote a expressionist painting. He wrote a painting of Abhinandana. He wrote a painting of Abhinandana. He wrote a painting of Abhinandana. आरे एक टक्कू इंटरेस्टिंग काज आच्छी रोधर छात्री बुर्दियल बुर्दियल एक टक्कू छोटू स्कॉप्चर आच्छी जिटा मार्गरेट मेलोवर्ड जिने बिलेट्टे केशे चिने रैंकिंग कॉर्ड एवं आरुषी शोमाए उधर मास्टर मशी चिने मर स्कॉप्चर मास्टर मशी चिने तीनी है ना चिने एवं कालोबारी दिवाले जी तो स्कॉप्चर � she sculpted Ramping Kachi sculpted the Kurichi. She did a Monita, a Buddhist Kora sculpted Chai Ovala. I came here as a student um, in 1983-84. So the Santiniketan schooling it was quite remarkable, and we have a very good tradition that Rabindranath Tagore started about this uh, teaching here. So there is the different kind of classroom, class system, class pattern here and uh, the teaching method is something very different uh, than other institutions. So gradually I went through this entire uh, teaching method. So I understood that uh, this is a real good teaching process for, um, for the artist, for their own development and uh, for the creative personality. This is a very good ambience for their artistic creative development. So, yes, gradually I like this um, teaching method here. And uh, now I am teaching here. So, uh, medium is nothing. We need, as a creative artist, we need some medium. And uh, otherwise, we can't do anything. So, that's why main thing is, as a creative artist, what your imagination needs, what you want to do. And for that, I think that what kind of medium is suitable for me. Uh, so, I just try to handle that, that medium for my expression. So, medium is, uh, this kind of specialization is fine, but not necessary nowadays. Because this medium is medium. Uh, so, any kind of, any medium is not uh, very sufficient for any artistic uh, expression. So, medium necessary for an artist to uh, hold their imagination. So, so, this is a negotiation between medium and the creative artist. Uh, yes, I encourage always, even I don't try to remember that I am from what discipline and I encourage them in the same thing. So, main thing is that they, they should know that what they want to do. Uh, what is their requirement for this expression and art practice is not uh, is, expression is fine but now it is not always for this expression of your own uh, so you need many things to uh, handle with uh, as a medium so yes I encourage them uh, so I practice sculpture uh, printmaking and uh, Yes, I have some kind of interest with something handling the material with uh, with hands, with, with tools, with machine, with uh, technical things. So this is a entire growing with this because your outside world is uh, outside world. So outside world means there are a lot of materials and people and uh, many things are there. So you have to work 
with them. Either it is a material, either it is a human being, either it is a animal or something. Uh, so beyond you, there is the just external air world, and everything is uh, material. যেটা বসল বিখ্যাত কবি আছে না উৎপল কুমার বসু উনি মারা গেছেন তো উনি এসেছিলেন তো ওকে নিয়ে আমরা ওই এশিয়া পার্টের ওই যে ইয়েটা আছে না দোতলা বাড়িটা ওর সিঁড়ির ওপরে আমরা সেটা বসালাম এবং তখন কবি এখানে দু একজন কবিও ছিল মিঠুও কবিতা লিখত মিঠু সেন তো সবাই মিলে ওই উৎপলকে ঘিরে সেইটা বসল তো এটা একটা পার্টিকুলার ইয়েতে হলো আর কি সব নন্দন মেলা এরকম হয় না হ্যাঁ তারপরে আর একটা শুরু করেছিলাম সেটা এখন হয়তো চলছে হ্যাঁ সেটা হচ্ছে জেরক্স করে বই বার করা তার আগে ছিল না আমি ওটা শুরু করলাম যে জেরক্স করে করে করা এখন বোধ হয় অনেকেই এখানে হচ্ছে অনেক রকম তারপর একটা হয় হাসির মানে কার্টুন করে করে বই টিচারদের নানা রকম কার্টুন না ও নানান রকম একবার নতুন একটা কিছু হলো কোনোটা আগে কার্ড মতো হলো সেটা ওই হিস্ট্রি অফ আর্ট ডিপার্টমেন্টের থেকে বিক্রি হয় তো এই সবগুলো প্রত্যেকবার বিভিন্ন ছাত্রছাত্রীদের উদ্যোগের ফলেও চেঞ্জ করে আবার আমরা যখন দায়িত্ব নিয়ে কিছু করি তখন আবার একটা চেঞ্জ তো এইভাবে সব আমাদের উদ্দেশ্যটা হচ্ছে যে ছাত্ররা একটা ক্রিয়েটিভিটির মধ্যে থাকে এই যে এত ইনস্টলেশন করা হ্যাঁ দোকান সাজানো থেকে শুরু করে সবটাই কিন্তু শুধুমাত্র দোকান করা বা বিক্রি করা তা নয় তার পেছনে ছাত্ররা যাতে সক্রিয় হয়ে কিছু একটা করে নতুন কিছু সেইটা একটা দরকারি জিনিস সেইটা খেয়াল রাখা উচিত আর কি এখন আমার মনে হয় যে সেটা এখনও রয়েছে আগের মতোই তবে আগের পরিমাণগতভাবে যেমন ছাত্র সংখ্যা বেড়েছে পরিমাণটাও বেড়েছে অ্যাক্টিভিটি সেটা আমরা দেখছি আর তখন এইখানটায় মিটিং হতো মনে আছে যে বিক্রি হয়ে গেলে আমরা সবাই কাজ দিতাম মানে শিক্ষকরা আমি প্রায় গত ধরো আমি এইটি সেভেন থেকে আছি তো এখন পর্যন্ত আমি হয়তো একটা দুটো নন্দন মেলা বাদ গেছে বাকি সমস্ত নন্দন মেলাতে আমি কাজ দেই এবং প্রায় কুড়ি তিরিশটা করে কাজ দেই সরা টরা এইসব এইবার হয়নি এইবার হয়তো হবে না কারণ এত ব্যস্ত আছি সরা প্লাস ড্রয়িং ছোটো ছোটো কালার পেন্টিং কাগজে এইসব করি তো এইগুলো বিক্রি করে পেন্টিং ডিপার্টমেন্টে আমি হচ্ছে খুব ম্যাক্সিমাম আমরা ইনকাম করতাম পেন্টিংটা তো ডাইরেক্টলি বিক্রি হয়ে যায় তো আমরা এক একবার কুড়ি বাইশ লাখ টাকা বিক্রি করেছি একসময় এখন কত হয় টোটাল জানি না সেটা ভাবতে হবে সেই যে আমি মানিদা মানিদা আমি সুহাস রয় হ্যাঁ আমাদের ডিপার্টমেন্ট থেকে তিনজনে যা কাজ দিতাম তাতে ওরকম কুড়ি বাইশ লাখটা তৈরি হতো এক তারপর মানিদা দিচ্ছেন না বড় যাতে চলে গেলেন সুহাস হয়তো দিচ্ছেন একা আমি অনেক কাজ দিতাম আর কি এরকম হয়েছে যারা এখানে আছে তারা জানে যে কীরকম এবং পুরো ফান্ডটা পেন্টিং ডিপার্টমেন্টের একটা বিরাট কন্ট্রিবিউশন হতো তার ফলে তবে সবাই মিলে হতো কোনো ডিপার্টমেন্টে একটু কম হতো বেশি যাই হোক সেই টাকাটা আমরা ফান্ডে জমা দিতাম জমা দেওয়ার ফলে আমার সময়ে ফান্ডটা খুব রেজ করে আমি যখন প্রিন্সিপাল ছিলাম আমার মনে আছে এবং একটা সাবস্ট্যান্সিয়াল ফান্ড হয়েছিল এখন কী আছে আমি জানি না এইটা তো মনে পড়ে আর 
আর হচ্ছে যে বিরাট কলকাতা থেকে জানো তো এখন কলকাতা থেকে নানান জায়গা থেকে সব এখানে লাইন দিত হয়েছে তার মধ্যে যেমন মিসেস রাখি সরকার সীমা গ্যালারি যে ওনারা তখন এইখান থেকে লাইন দিয়ে ছবি কিনতেন আমি কাউকে প্রেফারেন্স দেয়া হতো না যে সে বিখ্যাত বলে বা নাম করা বলে তাকে আগে কিছু দিয়ে দেওয়া আমি খুব স্ট্রিক্টলি এটা মেনটেন করতাম আমি তখন হেড অফ দি ডিপার্টমেন্ট ছিলাম কখনো প্রিন্সিপালও ছিলাম তো সেইটাতে কি হতো সবাইকে লাইনে দাঁড়াতে বলতাম আমার চেনা থাকলেও আমি সেই প্রেফারেন্সটা দিতাম না আচ্ছা তারপরে যেটা হলো যে একটা জিনিস ঘটলো সেটা হচ্ছে যে কলাভবনে যখন মেলা হয় এখন কলকাতায় কতগুলো সেরকম আর্ট ফেয়ার শুরু হয়ে গেছে সেই সীমাও এখন একটা আর্ট ফেয়ার করে সেটা ঠিক কলাভবনের ঠিক আগে আগে হ্যাঁ তার ফলে কলকাতার যে গ্রুপটা ছোট ছোট ছবি কিনতো তারা অনেকে আজকাল আসে না এইটা হয়েছে তারপরে এখন অনেক জায়গায় এরকম আর্ট ফেয়ার ইত্যাদি শুরু হয়েছে তো সেটা ভালোই তো খারাপই এখানে অনেকে ছবি কিনছে আর্টের পপুলারিটিটা বাড়ে আর এখানেও এখন আমি জানি না কত টাকা উঠবে এই বছর তো স্পেশাল কিন্তু নর্মালি কত ওঠে এক এক বছরে আমরা এই চাতালের ওপরে সবাই বসতাম এখন কি সেইভাবে হয় হয় না না ওই পরের দিন মেলার পরের দিন চাতালের ওপর সমস্ত হেড হেড অফ দি ডিপার্টমেন্টসরা হিসেব নিয়ে বসত কত ইনকাম হয়েছে সেই ইনকামটা ওইখানে জমা দিত আমরা এইভাবে হতো খুব ইন্টারেস্টিং তারপর তো পরের দিন আমাদের না এই জমা দেওয়াটা পরে হতো তারপর পিকনিকে যাওয়া ইত্যাদি আছে সকালবেলা গান করে করে নন্দলাল বসু বাড়িতে যাওয়া সেই সব ছিল তারপরে পিকনিকটা যাওয়া পিকনিকের যেমন এখনও হয় তখন ছাত্র সংখ্যা কম ছিল তখন হয়তো দুশো আড়াইশো তিনশো এরকম হবে এখন ওদের চারশোর ওপরে চারশোর ওপরে আছে আর একটা ছিল তখন শিক্ষকরা প্রত্যেক ছাত্রের সঙ্গে অনেক ইন্টিমেট থাকতে পারত তার ফলে সেই পরিবেশটা একটু ক্ষুণ্ণ হয়েছে আর দ্বিতীয়ত এখন টেকনোলজিক্যাল টেকনোলজির টাইম হ্যাঁ ছাত্ররা যতটা শিক্ষকের কাছ থেকে শেখে তার থেকেও বেশি শিখছে এখন কম্পিউটারে ওয়েবসাইট থেকে সব দেখছে ইন্টারনেট থেকে শুধু সেইগুলো তো চেঞ্জ সেগুলো এখন মানতেই হবে আর অনেক কিছু বলা যায় এখন ওটা মেলার বাইরের কথা ঠিক আছে তো আর তবুও আমার Yeah, so this is another uh, very important and uh, unique uh, festival here or uh, East London Mela, which was like uh, I used to hear about it, I used to read about it, but then after I came, to, I came and joined here, I was also a part of the you know, Mela. And uh, from the art history department, we come up with every, uh, every year, we come up with uh, two different journals. One is the Nandan and the other is the Searching Line, where the students give their own write-ups and the writings and then it's published. 
And uh, along with it, we also have uh, collections of very unique and old journals of London, which are still available. And of course, some are uh, out of print and some are still available here. And other than uh, only writing, write-ups and uh, journals, the students uh, do prepare themselves for also uh, artworks, different artworks. They make uh, paintings, they make calendars, they make uh, dolls and toys, which are actually very interesting because they come up with so much new idea and every year in Nandan Mela we can see that the students of uh, especially art history department are doing something very unique which is like uh, which uh, they don't repeat anything which they had done in the past. मेला जोन नो बिक्री करता हुए तो फले की नोटुन नोटुन आर्टवर्क इन शुमाए तो ये भी है जिगलो अनेक शुमाए स्टूडियो ते बोसे खूब भेबे चिंते करते के लिए शिगलो है ना शेक्षत्र बेसी सीरियस हो जाए इन तो एक हित्र मोंटा एकदम मुक्त हो थाके फले काजे नोटुन नोटो अनेक बेसी पाव जाए उससे ये पूरा अलग है तो ये फिल्म में आने के बाद मैं जान पाया कि सिर्फ वो ठाकुरी नहीं है यहाँ पे बहुत कुछ होते हैं जो आर्टिस्ट लोगों को हाथ में नया नया कुछ करने का मौका मिलते हैं तो उसके बाद हम लोग आर्टिस्ट ही पढ़ते हैं वहाँ से भी मैं बहुत सारे आर्टिस्ट को काम देखता हूँ बाहर का जो सब आर्टिस्ट आते हैं उस कल्चर में आके मैं बहुत सारे काम देखता हूँ मेरे को बहुत अच्छा लगते थे तो मेरा जो पंकज दा सबसे सीनियर है वो अच्छा उसका भलियूं जो मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगते थे उसका कॉन्सेप्ट भी अच्छा है सुतुनु दा भी है और और भी मोती दा सब टीचर भी मेरा गुरु है वो सब के साथ मैं डिस्कस करते थे कि वो एब्सट्रैक्ट क So, um, four years back, I probably wasn't this person I am today. And it's all because of Kala Bhava and, and it's all because of Shanti Niketan. When uh, I would I would like to mention the fact that uh, coming to Shanti Niketan has been um, you know the best decision so far that I've taken in my life. I've been going through it's 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 mainly due to Kala Bhavan it's mainly due to Shantani Ketan I think uh, it has made me um, somewhat down to earth it makes everybody down to earth no matter who you are no matter where you belong from you come here your lifestyle changes
activities uh, what we do all together with students, uh, students uh, teachers and students all together what they do. Uh, that is all together a learning process for me actually. Interactive sessions and learning process and uh, as I said earlier that this is all about opening up interaction and opening up and uh, where the process of learning that itself a process of learning and various activities that all together being uh, become a part of enjoyment and expression of self and, and enjoyment which is very essential for creative practices also so uh, that is what I always felt about uh, these activities
Kalabhavan so beautifully provides. 